Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So it's been a while since we made a truck on the channel. We did have the Panther Tree Turbo last season, as well as the original Brodozer that was remade. But I think that this time, since both of those are gone, we need to replace them with something a little bit better. So what we're going to be doing is making a single cab pickup. We're going to be using the 2018 uh, pickup body, but it's going to be... Or 2008 pickup body, but it's going to be in 2018. Hopefully this turns out okay. I did take a look at the body quickly and it's a it's a little big so we're gonna have to fill it with some fixtures. Now I'm going to try and be semi-realistic as I have been this season but it's not going to be perfectly accurate to any of the modern trucks. I'm gonna be basing the styling off of the new uh, 2019 Sierra and we'll see where it goes from there but it's not going to be the same as that probably going to have to take some design liberties as usual suspension is something that is a bit of a challenge i think what we're going to do is go for a weird style of having leafs in the back and double wishbone up front uh hopefully that works out now of course we need a v8 i'm thinking a 90 degree v8 just because it's a little bit bigger we'll make it cast iron uh, and let's raise up the bore as well. Uh, we won't raise the stroke because we're not going to have too many issues here with sizing. But it's going to be four-wheel drive, so yeah, we can make this huge. How about a 5-liter V8? Since we're designing it after the GM, why don't we go ahead and make our engine after the Ford? Uh, at least roughly. Again, not trying to be extremely accurate here. Let's go overhead cam. Uh, we'll do two, actually we'll do four valves per cylinder probably going to be okay i think i'm probably going to shoot for approximately 400 horsepower we don't need that much uh, i remember the brodozer had about 600 and the tree turbo also had about 600 but uh, the brodozer was the much better one of those two in terms of performance so let's do it with a uh, forge steel internals and we'll continue with forged now we could gain a lot more power by going with a sport cam or like messing with things like that, but again, trying to be semi-realistic. No turbos this time. Uh, we'll just keep it with direct injection and I guess per cylinder injection with a standard intake. And we'll just go regular gas this time. Uh, we're probably not going to need anything crazy. Trucks are supposed to be practical. Actually, per cylinder seems a little bit nuts, so maybe if we just do single. There we go. That makes a little bit more sense. Short cast headers, but we'll make them dual, and uh, we will put mufflers on it. <laughs> I don't like doing it, but let's do it. Uh, we'll just go like this. So it easily makes 265 horses, and it looks like the exhaust is restrictive. So we make that bigger, and we've got a nice and easy uh, approximately 300 horsepower. Not too bad. One thing that's good about this is it's a nice flat curve. A lot of my curves are very hilly. Uh, lots of bumps in the middle and stuff, so we're going to try and keep it that way. We'll see how long that lasts for. Uh, but let's put some performance to this and see what we can do. Right, so first thing I've done is raise the RPM limit. We can go up pretty high before this even starts to... Wow, okay. Uh, let's go for an 8,000 RPM red line. No, no, no. We'll try to be torquey on this one. We might even dial this back on purpose just because uh, it's a truck and it doesn't need that power. We do want that torque though. Okay, so first thing to do, let's raise the cam profile up to 50. We're almost at our horsepower rating already. Uh, and then if we start raising the compression, uh, you can see it's starting to knock just a little bit, but we've got pretty high compression, so we'll just add a bit more fuel. And as long as we're using our fuel, which is 91 octane, uh, we should be fine. So the short cast headers are unfortunately restricting the engine currently. I just did a little bit of tweaking, just like two minutes of fast sliding on the sliders, and we managed to make uh, 383 horsepower. I actually think that might be good enough. Like, it doesn't need to be too much. We could get more. I mean, we can pretty easily get more just by raising the cam profile, but I don't want it to be too choppy. I remember the Brodozer was pretty darn choppy. I like that this is uh, pretty simple. I know we can get more power by getting rid of the catalytic converter and mufflers, uh, actually, we can probably... Oh, we just lost power, didn't we? Goodness, I proved myself wrong. Uh, but we can we can get more power by changing with the headers. Currently, we're not using our octane once again. So we could uh, probably lower the fuel quite a bit more then. There we go. So we're using our fuel a little bit better. And our compression is quite high. 
Oh no, okay, I'm back to the tuning, it seems. There we go, so 380 horsepower, that's a nice even number. Using the fuel, everything else seems to be okay. So let's go ahead and go on to the styling. It's going to be a bit of a tough part for this one. Now, I do want to do the single cab. Uh, reason why? I don't really have a good reason why, I just felt like we should do it. And the only thing um, that's keeping me away from the double cabs is that they look terrible. And then like the cabin a, a bit just doesn't look very good either. So I figure we'll just go ahead with the long box single cab and uh, hope that it turns out okay. Now I do want to make some adjustments to it. This one doesn't have too much adjustability. Unfortunately, it does have kind of a built-in lip here, which I don't like. But I'm just going to lower down the bed. Uh, we'll keep the width maybe at a little bit more. I'm guessing that this would probably be... A 2500 or a 3500 just based on the size of it it's just massive we'll put up the hood i know that gms really like doing this and uh it, one thing i did notice as well is you can have a built-in bumper just like that which is cool uh, so i think we're gonna put that on there yeah i think that's gonna work uh now we need to go and add some fixtures to this thing oh i forgot about paint uh let's go ahead and paint it something maybe a forest green i don't know like the actual I, I i've seen very few gm trucks with that green that they have but it actually looks quite nice at least in my opinion however i just did do green last time so maybe something different all right there we go i'm gonna paint it white however uh, we do have a few options for paint we can paint the bumpers and we should be painting the bumpers uh, so we can go, oh, yikes, okay, that's a, that's a lot more bumper than I thought. All of this is currently red, but if we paint it, I don't know, black? Black isn't bad, maybe, I mean, this styling is going to be a little bit awkward with this, but we could go black for the front. All right, I'm going to leave it white. We will do our own coloring on that one. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that looks. Quickly, I just want to go ahead and swap in what we're going to be doing here. It's going to be an advanced auto. Let's go 9-speed. I don't think I've ever done something with 9-speeds before. Uh, we'll come back to the styling in a second. I just want to get some estimations here. No wheel spin currently. Uh, let's go with an automatic locker. That might not be correct, but we'll, we'll try it for now. Radials, of course. It's probably going to be medium compound, I would assume maybe even hard long life. Um, we need some width on these wheels though. That's that's one of the things I was concerned about. And we need some size as well. These wheels are very small. Um, so I'm gonna make these as pretty much as big as they can be. So at 880, and we'll make the rims a bit bigger. And by a bit, I mean a lot. All right, <laughs> Prodozer 2.0 incoming here. Uh, 31 inch rims, I can only dream. Okay, we'll go for 26s, and if that breaks it, then uh, we'll figure that out in a bit. Um, I'm kind of basing this off of the Denali, so yeah, it does have some pretty massive rims. All right, I think I've got the rims sorted. Uh, basically, they're 295s front and back, with quite a bit of offset in the back to uh, poke them out a bit, and we'll come back to that in a bit. Okay, just quickly, I want to do brakes. We'll do vented discs, two pistons. This is probably going to be pretty heavy. Uh, so we'll do my technique that I've done a few times where we make the brakes big. I uh, will come back to the graph as well, and then we put them on a comfort preset. And in terms of skid tray, we'll do an off-road skid tray, and I think that's it. Let's go back to fixtures, and we'll see what we can do here. Now, we need some chrome on this. Uh, we will go. We will attempt to do the Denali trim. Uh, if that doesn't work out, then we'll see from there, but for now, Denali trim. Uh, which means a lot of chrome. Oh goodness, I think I found the rims that we're going to be using. I have to admit, I don't like it, but it matches just too well. Like these ones right here down at the bottom. Uh, I think those might actually be from one of the older generations. So, perfect. Alright, it might be time for some of that good old artistic interpretation. Because this is not going to turn out exactly as the actual grill is. But I think that it's going to work for us. Uh, obviously this being my own design, just sort of roughly based on an actual vehicle. It's never going to be perfect, but I find that I work better when I have at least one reference to look at, just something that I can look to. Actually, it's almost looking like the... it almost looks like a Dodge now. 
Oh no, what have I done? Okay, so I'm going to keep that grill, but I want to do a few little details on it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is raise it up. And then we're also going to copy the GM's little vent that's here, uh, just because I like the look of it. I don't know if it's actually functional or not, but we'll give it a try. I, I think we might be able to replicate that using this piece here and just bringing it up. Uh, we'll see if this actually works or not though. Okay, there we go. So we've got that locked in. I'm going to change the color of it to be all black, or at least the, the window trim black. And that actually, yeah, that works there. It's not quite as I would have expected, but I think it's going to do it. Uh, we do need some more chrome though. Okay, before I get too carried away with the chrome, we have so much space to cover on this thing. Uh, let's put on some lights though. Um, it's going to be a little hard actually to figure out exactly what I want to do, but I think it might be these ones this time. Uh, and I also think we might just go for like the weird modern look and just do some weirdness like this perhaps. Oh no. Okay, it it is actually going to turn out weird, but again, I kind of like it. Oh yes. Okay, we've definitely got something going on here that is, well, basically perfect. Uh, let's make this outside piece chrome, because there there can never be too much chrome on your truck. You pay like a hundred grand for these things, so gotta make it nice. And then what else can we do? I think these are too small, so we'll make them bigger like this. Yeah, okay, there we go. And now we need something in here as well. Uh, they also have lights down here, and there's a krill down here as well. Yikes, okay, we have a few more things to do before the day is done here. Oh yeah, if you're wondering, I do have that turbo mod uh, that'll allow you to just place turbos anywhere and make them massive. <laughs> Eventually, we will use some of those. So there are definitely some weird experiments going on with this one. I've just spent a few minutes going around and doing some little things on there. I've added these little... Uh, pieces here to the side of the grill which I think actually look quite good. I don't know exactly what to do with them other than this. I just figured that uh, having a little extra detail on there is good. We might even do another set of lights down here or possibly a little lower uh, just because trucks tend to have pretty big lights or at least it seems like it when they're shining into your rear view mirror. Uh, I've also added some door handles just small ones because they don't really fit well within these caps. Nice antenna and the main attraction, uh, these exhaust here. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I went ahead and put two exhaust pipes. They are separate, uh, so you can move them separately just like that, and hopefully it doesn't glitch out too much. They're a mod pipe uh, that basically just allows you to have uh, two just like this. So, yeah, I figured that it looked okay. Hopefully it lasts that way, but let's continue on with the front. Uh, I'm going to try to add some lights down here. We'll see how that goes. So I've settled on these small lights here, but I'm not done with them yet. My idea is I want to link them together with a trim piece, similar to how it actually, well, similar to how it is on the GM, but <laughs> well, not quite the same as with most things here. Uh, it does not really fit on the bumper properly, at least this like giant protruding bumper. If we brought that in, it would be fine, but... Uh, because we need some lines, like we just need some extra lines on this, I'm basically going to take a trim piece like this and attempt to match it with these. And I'm hoping that it turns out okay. I'll take you along for the ride though, just like that. And you can see it kind of brings it in a bit. But what I want to do is uh, bring these up one layer so they go over top of that. And then this will make just black, I guess. Okay, that's not too bad. That's just one extra line on there. Uh, however, we do need a little bit more than that because this is just not going to cut it. Um, one thing we could also do is bring this up here and then uh, bring that out, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm just going to have to keep playing with that to figure that out exactly. Now, we do need some sort of grill slash vent thing down here to bring in this section. Otherwise, it's just this like <laughs> very large empty space. Uh, so it needs something. For that something, I think I'm going to put one of these grills on there, uh, but probably upside down. Okay, so there's that grill upside down. I want to widen it though. I think that that will work out nicely. 
Uh, obviously we need to change the colors of it. Uh, being white on the outside just isn't going to cut it. We need chrome, so that kind of fits there. I think one thing that this is missing is that this also needs to have some chrome on it to uh, match with the rest of the truck. And then with this piece here, um, it sort of ties the front end together a little bit. There's still kind of an empty spot here, though. How are we going to fill that? Oh, you know what? We need a license plate. That is actually not a bad idea. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to put a, a euro plate on it, even though that doesn't make any real uh, sense. <laughs> just kidding. It's going to be a, an automation plate. Uh, it just makes a little bit more sense, and it, it kind of looks better as well. Uh, yeah, no offense to European license plates. I do have a huge selection of off-road gear uh, that I want to try. Quite a few options here that we could use. Oh, stuff like full-on roof racks and... Just like crazy stuff like that. We could actually put one of these on the back of this thing if we if we really wanted to. Or we could just put a giant ladder on there as well. I didn't know this was turning into a stream build. Okay, I got rid of the bar across the front. I think that that looks just a little bit better. And I think I'm done with the front after all this time. Finally finished with it. Um, let's go on to the back. Now, I haven't got a picture of that yet. I'll look that up in a second. But we are missing a few things on the side now that I'm noticing. Uh, I did go with a nice, well, plasticky trim around here. Now for mirrors, we definitely need some tow mirrors on here. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just going to put regular style mirrors on here, I think. Uh, we don't need anything crazy. This one doesn't have a notch side like the Fords or anything like that. So we can probably just get away with some nice mirrors just like that. However, they do have to be chrome, so... <laughs> or or uh, possibly... Yeah, we'll make them chrome. Just fits the style. Okay, so I have a couple of good pictures of the back now, so I can see what's going on here. Uh, we do need some sort of bumper on the back, because currently it's just flat, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, it would be great if the body trim actually let us do that, but it doesn't as far as I can tell, so that's why it's long box currently. Uh, we could go short box, but I like the long box. That's all we can do to the back with that, so we're going to have to fake the rest of it in. I do like the way that the front's looking. I think it likes it looks decently aggressive, and I really like the rim combo as well. Uh, I, I really like the way that this is going. However, I do want to add just that little bit extra detail. Uh, and we are missing as well plastic pieces that go around here. We could do that, and I'm not sure if we will or not. I'm just going to have to continue on and see. However, uh, we can go ahead and work on the back, so first things first is taillights. Now, again, attempting to replicate the GM taillights. Uh, let's see, what can we do? <laughs> they are a composite of three different things. There's red on the top, then white in the middle, and then red again on the bottom. And they're sort of square, but not fully square. So that's kind of what we need to look for. Three-piece light, square, not fully square. Well, this could theoretically work. You can see that the areas are off with this, like there's too much white. And then this could work as well, but this is what I used on the Brodozer, so that just doesn't make sense. Uh, but we could do that. Let's just quickly try it. I mean, it's a 1970s design. Not saying the trucks have changed much since then anyways, but uh, we'll give that a go. Yeah, I don't know about this one. All right, so that's attempt one, and personally, I'm not a fan of it. They just look a little flat. So we're going to get rid of that, and maybe, uh, like I said, uh, I've said a few times actually, uh, if you can't find what you're looking for in the taillights, go ahead and look in the headlights and see if there's anything there. And then as well as the indicators, because we might find something here that works. Now what we can do, and what I think we're going to have to do, is do a one-piece big light, and then put our own white light into it. So... Let's give that a try first. Basically, I just want something that's plain. Uh, currently, I do have this, which is fine, but it's not ideal. As you can see, things are kind of sinking into it a little bit. Anything with some depth just sinks right in, so... Okay, I think what I'm going to do for the sake of time is take these ones that I currently have here. Uh, I'm going to make sure that they're on layer number one, and now we are going to modify them to work for this. Uh, just because they're currently, I mean, they're just red lights, so that doesn't quite do it. Right, so we have quite a few options for indicators. I'm going to take these and just shrink them up just a little bit, bring them up a layer, 
and we'll make them white and that should work. Uh, also, don't forget to make the bulb white kind of important. And then with that, we should just be able to put them on top and just have our own little custom lights. There we go. That's not too bad. Okay, let's bring in the rest of the tailgate. So we also need some sort of line on the top. I know I, I took away the line over here, but we kind of need something like uh, we just need some sort of. Oh, wait, do I have mini guns? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Military building coming. Uh, not today, but but at some point we'll do something. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize that half of the mods I downloaded started to work today. Lesson learned, don't go into the MISC section unless you're wanting to look for some weird components when you have a lot of mods, just because you never know what's in there. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to make all of this normal colors. I will take these, make them layer 3, take these, layer 2, and boom. Definition. What tailgate is complete without a handle? I know it's not a square handle with a lock, but I'm just going to use this one, I think. Yeah, that's not terrible. Uh, what I like to do is just zoom out and kind of look at the overall look of the thing. And personally, it does look okay. Um, maybe a bit too much red on the back, though. I'll just shrink those tail lights up just a little bit. And then take this and shrink that, of course, just a little bit as well. There we go. So... A little bit less red seems to be a good thing for this. Now we do have some bumper options. Uh, actually, we have quite a few bumper options. What I'm going to do though, let's put one of these on. We do have the option to go for a exhaust tipped one. Kind of weird. Uh, we'll probably just go for the without. Actually, that is really good. I'm glad that they added these. That's nice. I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to find something that actually worked for this, but there we go. We didn't even have to really try on that one. Can't complain about that. Okay, let's make this chrome, I guess. Maybe black? Hmm, you know what? I think it has to be chrome. So we'll make that chrome. Uh, we'll make the top of it like a darker color. And with that, like the exhaust actually has a place, which is cool. Uh, I'm very happy about that back bumper. Now we need a plate in there as well. So we'll grab the automation plate once again. Just slap it in there. There we go. Just like that. And we don't have any symbols or anything yet, but we will get there. Uh, we do need some sort of writing on this truck at some point. Okay, now is the time when I make the decision, am I going to wrap it around here or not? And also, how on earth could I forget the tow hook? There we go. Tow hook is definitely needed on here. It's pretty close because it's actually inside of the bumper, but... We're going to have to leave it that way. It's the only way it really works here, so that's uh, that's what we got. I just realized as well that I have giant police bars. Uh, no, we, again, we won't use those just yet. Okay, it's time for some writing. I've decided no to the bars. Uh, we'll, we'll work with that in a bit. I'm thinking this is going to be more of a race-oriented truck. Uh, we'll probably try and leave it at around stock ride height. It won't be super low or anything like that, but... I just want to have something that's uh, more race-oriented, more street -able, more more street-focused at the very least. So with that in mind, it needs a name. Now, I don't think the Brodozer ever had an official manufacturer name, so we're going to make one up. So I'm going to make the manufacturer Bro. And it's sort of GMC, but an, uh, an homage to the Brodozer because it was the first, like, truck that I made on the channel from what I can remember. And the 250 Workman is what this model is. Uh, yeah, it's not exactly the workhorse version, but it's definitely uh, a Workman. At least it could be. So I think that's what we're going to slap on here. But let's put some uh, manufacturing symbols. Oh, I've just noticed a lot of things have been added to the uh, library here. My goodness, there are a lot of badges. So if you want some of those, make sure to get that mod. But for now... Uh, we're just going to go ahead and write bro on the back of it with large letters, as I have done in the past. It is a real tedious task trying to line up all the letters, but it's worth it for that little extra detail. Just like that, kind of. Uh, yeah, that works. Okay. <laughs> well, bro, workman, and then on the sides, uh, we'll put 250. Just because, well... 
A little extra detail once again, and that is very hard to do because of the slope on there. Goodness, I think it's going to have to be like way up here. I'm going to have to sort of copy the, uh, the newer trucks the way that they have it. Just like this. There we go, 250. And then on the other side, it says 25 upside down zero. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I will fix it this time. Yeah, basically I just mirror the letters there so that I can line them up just like this. And it's, it's just the same thing like over top of it. So it makes it a lot easier to just line them up just like that. And then, I mean, the minor touches can come afterwards, but there we go, 250. Nice, not bad. I think that's it for styling. Yeah, just having a look at it. It's the Bro Workman 250. It's more of a, like I said, it's more of a street truck than anything. It's not going to be uh, one that you actually go and work with, although it does have a long box. Uh, yeah, not bad. It actually turned out a little bit nicer looking than I thought. So onto the drivetrain. Again, we've already touched this. Uh, no wheel spin issues, which is great. Uh, and wheels are pretty much set. We could make the backs a bit bigger, but I don't think we need to. Brakes, let's check that out. Oh, we don't have any craft for it yet. Uh, interior, we'll just go with the usual basic stuff that I do. Um, we'll do hydraulic power steering. We'll put ABS on it. And actually, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll leave that now. If it doesn't weigh enough, we'll get to there. Um, suspension, okay. <sighs> Goodness, this makes it tough. Let's go progressive. Uh, let's go adaptive. This is probably not correct. Let's go off-road. We'll go for a sport preset. Oh, wow, that is way out there. Uh, we're going to have to fix that for sure. And the look of that is not bad. I want to raise it up just a little bit. Just like that, I think, makes sense. We're going to have to somehow get this back into here because uh, currently that is not well done. All right, over to the wheels. It seems like our wheels might be a touch too big. So I'm going to shrink them, specifically the fronts, and we'll have to do an offset, I guess, to compensate for that. Uh, I do also want to shrink the backs. Oh no, I can't. Okay, <laughs> looks like the backs are going to be bigger than the fronts just to appease the graph here. It doesn't look right, but uh, we will try to mask it with more offset. Just have as much offset as we can get here. And it shouldn't be too noticeable. Like, um, I'm going for more style than anything with this, and having issues like this kind of makes that more challenging but that's fine i think i'm okay with this it's not going to be perfectly good at driving especially with these numbers here but i think it'll be fine now brakes okay our, our front brakes are not anywhere near strong enough and our back brakes aren't strong enough either let's bump those up to four pistons and we're keeping the vented discs but we'll just make them huge uh and the backs as well i'll make them pretty big yeah, okay, we definitely need <laughs> maybe six pistons in the front, as nuts as that seems. But I guess it is a 250, so it needs that extra braking power. Ah, uh, okay, I think we're good there. And now we do have an off-road skid tray, but we don't have any downforce. It actually does have downforce, but I didn't do anything to get that. Like, it has no lips. I think we're okay, though. It's not anything crazy. Let's just check. Wheel spin, 90% in first gear or 90% of the wheel spin is in first gear. It's only 8.8%. That's a mistake I've been making for a while. Uh, I want to do a lower spacing. This truck is not going to be particularly quick. Now, we could also do an electric LSD, or we could do geared, possibly. Uh, you know what? Let's go electric LSD. That's going to help with the wheel spin. And with lower spacing, we should be fine. Uh, it's still going to be four-wheel drive. It's going to be limited slip four-wheel drive. It just won't have locking diffs, which is fine. Because it's a race-oriented truck, we might be able to get away with the sports compound. Oh yeah, that helps quite a bit. Okay, we'll do that just for the sake of the wheel spin. And I think that's going to be it. This truck is complete, so it how much does it weigh? <laughs> 2,397 kilos with 388 horsepower so not much power uh in comparison to the weight but that's kind of what you would expect nice five liter v8 the bro workman is ready to be put to work let's see what it'll do in beam all right so here is what the workman looks like in beam uh you can see it kept all of its little details which is nice and the lettering is hardly visible but it's still there a ton of chrome uh but just the way i like it you can see it is in the shadow of the Brodozer, the one that came before it. 
and maybe one day we will do do the same sort of thing that we did to the brodozer to this one and just uh make it a mall crawler but for now i just want to take the new creation out for a spin in the tough truck challenge map that's what this is you can just find it on the steam workshop so let's go ahead and give this one a try i actually haven't driven it yet uh, however it is automatic so i'm not going to be picking any gears with this one oh it's actually not that slow <laughs> i was a little worried it would be slow i believe that the brodos are actually weighs about 500 kilos more than this does but it also has 600 horsepower whereas this has well just under 400 uh, in terms of actual off-road ability, uh, we'll be able to see in a bit, but in road testing, uh, I haven't actually picked out a map yet. I know that I mentioned that I would in the previous video, but I haven't gotten to it yet. I'm still trying to pick a track for this season, and when I do, we will race all of the cars that will be in the season on it. I'm just not even sure which ones I'm going to be using for the season yet, and uh, I don't want to do them on the track unless they're going to be used in the season. So, for a mall calling truck, uh, I mean, it's not really a mall crawler, is it? It's more of a street racing truck. <laughs> um, it's not that bad off-road. It balances quite a bit. It's on a sport preset, and uh, yeah, you can definitely tell. Uh, stuff like the Brodozer is a little bit more soft, a lot more wobbly. Wow, okay, we just lost the rear bumper. <laughs> Let's restart. A um, little bit softer, a little bit more wobbly. Let's see if it can do this small off-road course. And then we'll attempt to pull a trailer, and it seems like something is going to be constantly falling off. Uh, that rear bumper is very loose. Oh geez, okay, maybe going over this with any speed at all might have been a mistake. But this water hazard is what really poses a threat. Okay, uh, we cleared it, not too bad. I really like the way this one sounds, the V8 is quite nice. Uh, let's get some speed going here. We're not really able to hear it because a lot of these things are slow, but... Ooh, that was perfect. Yikes. Okay, not too many issues with this section at all. Uh, I definitely would uh, vouch for this one in any, corner, any kind of race around here. But that turned out pretty decent. And not much damage to it at all. I guess being a truck, it's a little bit more tough, but... Yeah, that turned out well. Alright, let's do the unthinkable. It's time to hook up a trailer to it. Now, I want to do two trailers today. Uh, we're going to first test a hay trailer. Uh, this is actually the same one that the Rhino pulled around here, I guess. Uh, basically, it's the heaviest hay trailer with a normal hitch that there is. Uh, so let's see if we can pull it with the truck. Now, for those of you who are unaware, okay, goodness, that bumper will not stay on. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, you can just hook up trailers and beam pretty easily. You just have to press L. Yikes, that bumper. And uh, generally speaking, they'll just like heat seek over to it. Just like that. Okay, so we've got the trailer. Uh, we've lost the bumper, which I guess is weight reduction, if nothing else. And, okay, not too bad. Uh, thankfully, one thing that's good about this trailer is all the weight of it is kept on its two axles, so you don't, like, bottom out too much. Uh, so it's mostly pulling power that actually determines whether or not you're going to go... Uh, I'm just being very light on the gas, and we start are still in high range, um, but you definitely do notice that there is a trailer behind you, unlike the Rhino, which pulled it with relative ease. Okay, these bumps are definitely not treating us too well. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's kind of the point of the Tough Truck Challenge map, though. It's not really a trailer towing map, is it? Okay, let's go, and we've lost the cargo, but that means that we must do one more very heavy piece of cargo. Now this seems like it's probably not going to work, but I want to try and put the Rhino onto a trailer and see if this will pull it. This is the heaviest vehicle I've ever made. This is the Rhino R. Uh, it's probably going to nuke this trailer as soon as it gets onto it, but it does happen to weigh almost 10,000 kilos. Oh, come on, Rhino R. Let's go. Get up onto that trailer. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's trying to eat it. Uh, this was a mistake. It's destroying the trailer and the bumper as well. Alright, minor change to the challenge. What we're going to attempt to do instead is we're going to try to push the Rhino. Uh, I don't know if anything... Well, I mean, it should be pretty reasonably easy to do that. However, I'm going to try it 
uh, from already up against it, so no running start. And, okay, it will push it, but what about, hold on a minute. Now the Rhino has issues, um, specifically with its handbrake. Uh, if you put that on, its brakes will start to smoke like crazy. So if I try and push it with that on, is it gonna work? And the answer is yes, it will still push it, although barely, with the uh, handbrake on. Come on, there we go. <laughs> well, that was 100% worth it. <laughs> so that is the Workman 250. Hopefully you enjoyed. Just something a little bit different for you. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll get to putting this on a track with the other new vehicles in a bit. Uh, but most of the time, these ones have been focused on style, so yeah, not so much track oriented, even though I did say a few times this one is more street focused. It's still not really track focused, it's still a truck. Like, anyway, thank you for watching. See you again on Tuesday for some more weirdness. Uh, basically, Fridays have been more serious, whereas Tuesday's been a bit more weird. That's just kind of how it's going to go for the next while. And uh, I just want to say a special thank you to those who have chosen to sponsor the channel, specifically Will and Canadian Steel. Thank you for your support, and I will see you again soon.